All right, we'll talk about something called electric fields here. So we haven't introduced it, but you know, if I talk about something like a gravitational field, so Earth has its own gravitational field we fill at the surface, and we can know the exact accelerations, rough, you know, or at least the precise acceleration somewhere around 9.8 meters per second squared. So if I look at the gravitational field, what does something have to have to feel the gravitational field of the Earth? Mass. Mass. And so if I take the mass times that acceleration due to gravity, I get the weight, which is a force in Newtons. Well, <clears throat> for an electric field, it's not about having mass, it's about having charge. But the product of those two, again, is going to get me a force, just like mass and gravity get me a force. So charge and electric field are going to get me a force in Newtons. So anything that has charge can feel these electric fields. All right, so if we look at the equation we just had with Coulomb's law just a second ago, If you look here, so these two charges feel a force from each other. So, and one way to look at that is we could say that one of these charges creates an electric field at the spot where the other charge exists. And so as a result, the one charge is feeling the other charge's electric field. So if we look at how that compares to this equation, if we set, so let's just say we have Q1 in Q2 here, and I say, what's the, what's the force that Q1 feels? Okay, it's right there, right? So, but if I look at it from this perspective, and I say, what's the force Q1 feels? I would say, okay, well, it's Q1 times some nebulous electric field here. So, but this is also equal to K Q1 Q2 over R squared. And I can use this to derive, well, then what must be the, the relationship, what, what must be the electric field, the value or magnitude of it, in this case, what do you get? Yeah, we get kq2 over r squared. So, and this is kind of the general relationship. So it's just kq over r squared. This is the electric field a point charge causes a distance r away from itself. Cool, and this is a vector, so it has both direction and magnitude. So, and in this case, your electric field has units of so you'll get those units by looking at this equation right here. Notice if you rearrange this, what's that electric field going to be equal to? Good, force over charge, which means it should have units of? Newtons per coulomb. Sweet. Cool, so electric field might be caused by point charges, might be caused by charges of other varying surfaces and stuff like that. So if I just look at simply a point charge, so electric field lines radiate outwards in all directions from a positive charge. In fact, we can make the general statement that electric field lines that we draw here will always have their origin at a positive charge, every time. Now, it turns out if I have a negative charge, electric field lines will always terminate on a negative charge, if we have one anyways. So, and we can make a more general statement and say that electric field lines will either always go out to infinity, if there's no negative charges around, or always terminate on a negative charge. Cool. I put on your handout, so an electric dipole on the far right there. So you should just be familiar with what the electric dipole looks like. You should see how, oh yeah, all the electric field lines originate on the positive and either go out to infinity or look like they go off the drawing anyways, but terminate on the negative charge and all nice, lovely, smooth lines and stuff like that. Just something to be familiar with. You might get some lovely multiple choice questions that just have you picking out pictures of how the electric field lines should look and things of that sort. Cool. So number five, we've got a negative one microcoulomb charge and a positive nine microcoulomb charge. And the question is just at what location along this x-axis, along the horizontal here, is the electric field zero? So in this case, like let's just say I've got a point in the middle here. Why might it feel an electric field? What's causing any electric field for anything I might place at this particular point right here? Well, well, both of them, in fact. I mean, they both are. So, but you're right. One might have a bigger impact than the other, depending on how big it is, how, what magnitude of the charge is, as well as potentially how far away it is. So one thing to note, the electric field lines always point the direction a positive test charge would feel the force. So notice if I put a little tiny, what we'll call positive test charge right here, would it feel attraction or repulsion? Repulsion, which means it would feel a force to the right, the same direction as the electric field. So however, if I put a negative charge right here, would it feel attraction or repulsion? It would feel attraction. And so 
the force on the negative charge field is exactly opposite the direction of the electric field. So the electric field here has been defined kind of relative to what a positive charge is. But because there's also negative charges, we just got to remember that it's the opposite. So the electric field always points the same direction as the force a positive test charge feels always opposite the direction a negative test charge would feel. Cool? So going back here, if I put a little positive test charge right in the middle of the x-axis here, what direction would the electric field point due to this charge right here? And we can think about what force would that positive charge feel because it's the same direction. What direction would it be to? To the left. And what direction would the electric field point at this point right here due to him? Also to the left. Is there any way that's adding up to zero? We have those vectors together. Not at all. So, and, and so what we can see is that anywhere in between these two, there's no way the electric field could ever be zero. So what if we put a positive test charge out here? What direction would it feel the force due to the nine microcoulomb charge? To the right. And what direction would the force it felt due to the negative one microcoulomb? To the left. And so since those forces are opposite and those are in the same direction as the electric field, the electric fields are one's positive, one's negative. The question is, could they cancel? Well, in this case, if we look at the equation for electric field, how does the electric field depend on the charge? How are they mathematically related? Proportional. They're proportional. So in this case, whoever's got the bigger Q would have the bigger effect on the electric field just examining that one variable. So who's got the bigger Q? Good. He's got the bigger magnitude Q. So in this case, so far, he's winning, if you will, so, and would have a bigger effect on that just based on charge alone. But how does the electric field depend on the distance separation? Inversely proportional to the square. And so in this case, it, the closer you are, the larger the, the electric field, the further you are, the smaller the electric field. So in this case, if I put a you know, positive charge out here, who's closer? The positive nine. And so in this case, it would have the higher electric field based on charge considerations and based on distance of separation. He's got the higher magnitude charge and he's closer the smaller r. He's gonna have the larger electric field. And so in this case, is there any way these are gonna cancel? Not a chance. So then we go to the other side. And obviously I tried the one that's gonna work here last on purpose. So, but in this case, what's the direction of the electric field due to the negative one microcoulomb charge? To the right and due to the positive nine microcoulomb charge? To the left. Now based on charge considerations, which one's gonna be bigger? Just based purely on charge considerations. The one from the positive nine. Based on distance of separation considerations, who would be bigger? The negative one. And that's where at some point they're going to balance. And so in this case, if you look, I'm going to pick this distance just to simply be, I'm going to call it, you know, I'm going to call it X. That way I'm not using R in different ways. So I'll call that X. So in this case, what we're going to find is that K Q one over R one squared plus K Q two over R two squared is going to add up to zero. And we just got to keep in, in this case, I'm going to have you guys keep track. So I'm going to plug in absolute values for those Qs, just like we do in Coulomb's laws. What direction they point, we'll keep track of ourselves and make it positive or negative accordingly. So in this case, one thing we should know is we can get rid of something. Something can fall out of this equation. We can factor it out. What is that? Yeah, if I factor out the K and just divide both sides by K, well, zero divided by K is still zero. I'm just going to get rid of it here. So in this case, it doesn't really matter which one's Q1 and and, and Q2, I'm just going to make the negative one microcoulomb charge Q1, so one times 10 to the negative six coulombs. And what's his R value as we defined it? X. X. And so we'll square it. Great. And then Q2 is the nine microcoulomb charge, so nine times 10 to the six coulombs. And what's his R value, distance of separation? X plus. 0.01 meters. Awesome. We could have left it in millimeters and solve for it later. In fact, if this was a multiple choice question, I would just see what units are the answers having. So, and do it that way, because the units will work out whatever you choose. So I like meters. I like sticking with SI. And then what do we have to do to this? Square it as well. Cool. Now, which one points in the positive X direction? This one does. This one points in the negative X direction, so we'll subtract and then they'll equal zero. What kind of equation are we going to have to solve here? Quadratic. Quadratic, except I tricked you. No, we're not. So let's just do this a little different. 
What's convenient is we have a perfect square in both of these numbers. I'm just going to move this over to the other side. But each side of this equation is a perfect square, and I'm just going to take the square root of both sides. And so in this case, I'm going to get, what's the square root of 1 times 10 to minus 6? Cool, how do I solve this thing now? You might cross, multiply might be a route, so 3 times 10 to the negative 3x equals 1 times 10 to the negative 3x plus 1 times 10 to the negative 5. Cool, subtract this over. 2 times 10 to the negative 3x equals 1 times 10 to the negative 5. Did somebody solve for x for me? Should do this in our head. One half is 0.5, and 10 to the negative 5 over 10 to the negative 3 is 0 0.005 meters. Cool. So this distance x is 0 0.005 meters. That would mean 0 0.005 meters left of the negative 1 microcoulomb charge, or 15 millimeters left, or, you know, or 0 0.0. Uh, 0 0.015, I should say, uh, 0 0.015 millimeters left of the 9 microcoulomb charge. There's a lot of different ways you can define where it's located and stuff like that. But let's look at this for a second. So if you look, how far are we away from the negative 1 microcoulomb charge? 5 millimeters. How far are we away from the 9 microcoulomb charge? 15 millimeters. We could have rationalized that out earlier. So if you look at this here, <laughs> looking at this guy right here, so... How, much, how many times bigger is the charge? So for this charge compared to this one in just magnitude? Nine times. nine times bigger, which means the distance of separation squared has to be nine times bigger as well. Well, if the distance of separation squared is nine times bigger, then the distance needs to only be three times bigger. And 15 millimeters is three times bigger than five millimeters, and life is good. Cool? Sweet. So if this were a multiple choice question, I would never have done all this. I would have looked and said, okay, figured out which side had to be on and then figured out the three to one ratio, which, one, which answer choice was consistent with that. Cool.